It's Dub Sock Live brought to you by Mancini Sleep World. 29 minutes, 51 seconds. That is Steph Curry's uh, minutes total in this game. So less than 30 minutes for number 30 and something fans are talking about. So let's get into it on Dub's Talk with Zena Keda. I'm Kareth Burke. Steph checked in at 6.54 in the fourth quarter. The Warriors were down 97 to 89. What did you think about the way Steph was used in this game tonight? I thought that the ending of this game was very different than what we saw him and how he was used on Friday. But I don't necessarily think I think that it was normal, I guess, especially with what they needed at the time. Um, I don't want to criticize it too much because, as you saw, Steph played all 12 minutes, literally every single second of the fourth quarter against the Indiana Pacers. Mm -hmm. He went one for seven from the floor. He went one for six from three. So it wasn't necessarily a great thing for him to be used in every single second. However, at the time that the Warriors first subbed out Stephen Curry, they were down 65-69, or excuse me, up 69-65. Mm -hmm. By the time that he came back, the Minnesota Timberwolves had went on a 30 to 37 to 20 run. Okay. 37 to 20 run. In that same period of time, they shot eight three-pointers. The Warriors shot three. Mm -hmm. They needed a three-point threat in order to try and just decimate a little bit the lead that was building from the, the Timberwolves and also the momentum that was building with the Timberwolves. And their best three-point threat was on the bench. So I don't know. I, I don't want to say that I didn't like the way he was used because you can look at the Pacers and say that's an example of, hey, it doesn't matter. But I do think that in, this t in tonight's game, he should have been used a little bit sooner because they needed a three-point threat. And if you look down the line, he was the only one that was showing up. All right, so it seems like the Warriors are searching for what to do with Steph Curry for the remaining games of the season. Remember, there's a previous road trip. There's a lot of talk about whether Steph Curry would get a rest game. He did not. So this is Steve Kerr trying to manage Steph's minutes, which coincided in a very important game for them. Marcus Thompson kind of laying it out here. So yeah, as you mentioned, he played the entire fourth quarter against the Pacers. That resulted in, that was part of a, a game that was a loss. Steph got more rest tonight, rest so to speak, by only playing 30 minutes. They lost in this one. So the Warriors are searching for some kind of answer here. And it was something that Steve Kerr addressed right off the top because it was the questions from the reporters that came right off the top. So let's hear uh, Kerr's perspective on why Steph Curry played less than 30 minutes tonight. We've, we're trying to keep him around 30, um, trying to get him as much rest as, as we can. Um, we've uh, played him a lot of minutes, played him 35 two days ago. So um, as long as we were hanging in there, then, then uh, we wanted to to limit the minutes a little bit. Not limit them, but not over overplay him. There was, a, there was kind of that stretch in the fourth where you took time out with like nine minutes left. Mm -hmm. I think you were down four. Looked like you might go back to Steph, didn't, and then it was eight, and you did go back. Do you feel like that was the deciding, but one of the deciding stretches? No. No. We got Chris Paul out there. We got Clay. We got Draymond. We got, we got great players out there. So um, it's... Uh, you know, you, we can't expect to, to just ride Steph um, game after game after game. You, you know, these last few weeks have been really tough on him. We've, we've, we've put the burden of this franchise on his shoulders for <laughs> 15 years. Um, we can't expect him to play 35 minutes. We've got five games in seven days on this road trip. So um, if you want to say that him playing 30 minutes instead of 32 is a difference in the win and the loss, I, I totally disagree with that. And we're trying to, we're trying to win the game. We're trying to, uh, to keep him fresh, too. So five games in seven days is a very interesting point. You see a coach trying to protect his player. He said 30 was the goal for tonight. Sorry, trying to keep him around 30 in this game. My follow-up question would be, well, is that going to also be for games going forward? Um, and he, Steve was very careful not to say the word limits, like a, or a minutes restriction or a minute limit. He doesn't want to put that kind of those kind of boundaries on Steph. But it does seem like this team is going to have to search for how to use Steph Curry in these remaining games. He's so essential to what the Warriors do, but you see a pattern that they also don't want to wear him into the ground. And they, he's had a lot of burden on his shoulders for 15 years. I really do appreciate Steph calling. I mean, Steph, Steve, Coach Kerr calling that out. That that is a burden to carry, and you do want to protect a player like Steph. That is is so essential to try to make a run for the playoffs. 
For me, I really think it's about the players around him stepping up. You look at this game tonight, Steph had 31 points and no one around him had more than 20. This is a similar theme that we saw in the beginning of the season where Steph was carrying like the team like a backpack on his shoulders, not being able to find a secondary score or even a tertiary score. And this is where Jonathan Kamingo was able to step up, particularly in those January months, you were able to see him emerge as the next person to go alongside him. So I, I, I do agree with Steve Kerr. Like, is an extra two minutes really the difference maker here for a Stephen Curry? I don't know. You, we, we'll never know. But I know there a difference maker was in the minutes that he was sitting down. CP3 did step up, but not to the level that he, we needed or the Warriors needed, right? In the same breath that they were shooting eight three-pointers, the Warriors couldn't match that. And so you can have CP3 pulling up, getting his, his, his mid-range game going, but there's still going to be a deficit because those are two-pointers versus three-pointers. Okay. We need to hear what Steph had to say because naturally reporters asked him about the same thing. You know, were you surprised that you sat so long in the fourth quarter? He said a little bit, but let's hear Steph's extended comments. I mean, obviously you're comparing it to last game and the manure rotation. Like, I want to play as many minutes as, as I'm fresh and able to. Uh, so a little bit. Knowing that they were just going on a run, um, it was the lead was kind of weathering away. So, you know, we played the whole fourth quarter in India against Indiana. It didn't work out. This didn't work out. So we got to find somewhere in the middle. Uh, you know, Steve has mentioned wanting to to keep you around thirty to thirty two. With you know how compact the schedule is, and really said how much a bur of a burden you've had the last fifteen years, really, with this franchise. I mean. I know it's a conversation we've we've had plenty, but I mean, can you only play thirty to thirty-two right now, considering what's at stake? The uh, situation will define itself pretty clearly, and it is in, in kind of real time. So every game matters. You know, we're inching closer to the other end of the standings that we never thought we'd be in. So nobody's gonna wave the white flag and say. You know, you're you're mailing it in, and if that means playing more minutes, and I'll be ready to do that. I think Steph's ready to play. Uh, what do you say that the situation will define itself pretty clearly, and it is in real time. Every game matters. That answer right there, very diplomatic. Very mm -hmm. Steph Curry says he's not going to play 30 minutes going forward. Steph doesn't show his cards easily, mm -hmm. and he's incredibly, like you said, I like the word you use, diplomatic. Mm -hmm. um, and intelligent in the way that he evaluates these situations. But Stephen Curry knows his ability, he knows his limits, he knows his match. If there's anybody that knows his body better than Steph, it's, it's Stephen, mm -hmm. right? He knows exactly what he's capable of. And so I, I thought his use of words of the situation will reveal itself um, were very ominous in a way, but it's something to keep an eye out because when you get to a point in this season, in a season like this where he also mentioned that they're trending towards a part of the, the layout of the playoff games that they didn't think they'd be in, in the sense of being in that 10th spot and solidifying their position in that 10th spot and kind of making the, the play for the sixth seed a distant, distant dream. You're seeing that as they get closer to the end of the season and they're just trying to make sure that they stay in the 10th spot yeah. to even be in the conversation, yeah. that the situation will reveal itself and that I'm going to want to play. That's my opinion. That's what I think that he's trying to insinuate there is that I'm going to want to play. Mm -hmm. I'm going to want to do whatever I can for my team to be able to get us there. And as long as he is capable to get on the floor and, you know, provide what his team needs him to provide, in this case, 31 points, whatever it may be, I feel like he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be interesting how that, that plays <laughs> out because obviously yeah. his his team and his coaches want to look out for him and ensure that he is a, like, has the longevity mm -hmm. to even make it to the playoffs let alone, right, make it to the playoffs, into the playoffs, but then also play through a series. Mm -hmm. That's important, too. So ominous choice of words tonight. Um, just, yeah. And it's, it's very, you have to be particular because at the end of the day, these athletes are incredibly competitive. And we've seen athletes push themselves to degrees that are not helpful for teams. Yeah. Right? So you have to be careful. But uh, at the end of the day, Steph, Steph Curry knows his body. 
So it's, yeah. it's, it's dicey, folks. It's interesting. Yeah, no one's wearing the white flag and Steph clearly indicating that he wants to play. So here we are, the highest payroll in the league in danger of falling out of the play-in. The Rockets coming up behind them. There's an urgency to save the season right now yeah. with 12 games left. Okay, let's talk about Minnesota. A very good team, tied for third in the league in three-point shooting percentage. And wow, did they have their threes on tonight. 21 in this game. <sighs> Cena, mm. what, did you, what did you think of the Timberwolves really finding their rhythm and getting hot from three? I thought it was amazing to see how much they had so many different types of people and players involved in the three-point game tonight. And where it stemmed from was their ability to cover the ground with the ball. Their ball movement tonight was pristine. Look at that inside in pass. Kyle Anderson immediately knows he doesn't have anything and gets it out. So you saw this ball sharing, this ball off ball movement all throughout the night and you saw all of these different characters get involved into this. And so when you have multiple people being able to hit the shot, because mm -hmm. that's a that's a thing, guys. Like you, there are people that are literally in the league to be three and D guys. Yep. Hit your threes, play some D. Hit your threes, play some D. And if you cannot hit your threes, you are not an asset to a team. And that is what the Minnesota Timberwolves can do. It's, an, it's incredibly impressive. And not only can they do that, they can also limit the opposite team's threes really, really well. And their, de their defense um, being third in the league so and fourth in the league. So you're just like, wow, okay. great job um, on all sides of the three-point line. All right, let's toss a name out there, Nas Reed. Okay, pregame. Steve Kerr reminded everyone that Nas Reed is a Warriors killer. He was again tonight. Averages 13 points, had 17 by halftime on six of eight with five threes. Finished this game with six threes, I believe. He was in the lineup because Carl Anthony Towns is out. So they have a big that they can go to that could shoot that three. And wow, he was just a force in this game. Nas Reed is a player that I have admired for many years. And actually my admiration grew every time he played the Warriors specifically. And that, what he does in being able to stretch the floor for Minnesota, and I said, excuse me, I misspoke. They are not fourth in the league in defense. They're first in the league mm -hmm. in defense. And Nas Reed's part of that. Mm -hmm. His length and his ability to uh, hurry players and how he gets in their face also speeds up their offense. And so now you've got one of your longest players, your tallest players, your most athletic players, leading your break on the other end. And guess what? He's behind because he got the ball, he got the rebound, whatever it is, and he pulls up into that trail spot mm. and splashes. What a threat and how critical it is to have a Nas Reed when you don't have a Carl Anthony Towns, who also is money from that trail spot position. Minnesota is stacked when it comes to big players being able to hit the three, and Nas Reed in the first quarter particularly was what the Minnesota Timberwolves used to keep themselves in this game. And throughout this game, he was phenomenal. There you go. He started five of five. Undrafted player. He's a lot of fun. And I was pointing at the TV screen because his line tonight of 20 and 12 with six threes. He is our BMW ultimate performer. It's a shame it had to come from the, the other, other team. Side, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, there was a little bit more uh, thoughts from Steph Curry at the podium. So let's hear from Steph. The challenges you guys have faced in, in crunch time this season and what are the, the keys to executing down the stretch? Honestly, everything, getting out shot from three point line, giving up offensive rebounds, disorganized on offense with a couple of tough turnovers and any, like a, any game just on the road, especially, but any game, you know, the play here or play there can define 48 minutes. It's, it's weird. Like it's, it's such a hard league to win games. And when a team is uh, kind of reeling and you have a chance to put them away, not being a close game like we had at the beginning of the fourth quarter, we didn't do it. End of the third quarter against Indiana, we didn't do it. So uh, it's tough. Steph, every year, uh, well, many years, the Warriors have been at the top of the West. When you look at the West this season, do you see it as being a deeper conference than it's been in years past? Or how, how do you look at this? No, for sure it is from top to bottom. You got the defending champs, you got Minnesota, you got OKC, the young <clears throat> young guys on the map. And then you got the uh, that next tier of teams that have had playoff experience and trying to get to that next level. 
he got us and you know, down the way we're we're surprised that we're here, but we still feel like we're capable of beating anybody. So everybody has talent. Everybody has something uh, that they built their identity on and it is it is a very competitive landscape. And it's going to be interesting to see how it all shakes out, but we want to be in that fight. Okay, there's the spirit. The Warriors still want to be in the fight, although the fight feels like it keeps getting tougher. Who else could handle tougher mm. than those three? You think about the, the pillars of the, the Warriors and Steph, Clay, and Draymond, and then obviously everyone else they've added since then. I do think they still have a fight, and they have the talent capable, mm -hmm. right? You saw what they were able to do tonight even. Keep a lead. They just got to close the games. Mm -hmm. That's what they got to figure out. All right, let's take a look at the standings when we come back on Dubstock Live, brought to you by Mancini Sleep World, because it does feel like the West is getting better. The Warriors right now 36 and 34. We will also touch on the bench effort this evening. And that man right there. We'll be right back. Dubs Talk Live is presented by Mancini Sleep World. Visit us during our spring clearance sale. Save big on premium mattresses plus free delivery. Hurry in now or visit us online at sleepworld.com. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in on YouTube. The usual faces in here. Otis, Arjun, Bree, Manny, all up. Uh, Kat, Vince, what is up, my friends? I think a lot of people are trying to figure out, is the season over? I think the Warriors are sort of trying to figure that out, too. They still have some of that competitive spirit. You can see it when Steph is talking. This can't be the end. This can't be how they finish. It can't, it's not only Steph. It's Steve Kerr as well. Mm -hmm. I think everyone is in the boat of, like, we're capable, we're capable. And that's what's tough. When you know you're capable, you have the talent, you've got the, you've got the pedigree, you've got the history of being able to still pull it out and figure a way to get it out. It, it just makes you, it, it makes it harder to accept when you're, okay, maybe it's time to lay it down. Yeah. And I'm not saying they should lay it down, but in, this, in the sense, I, I, I think that it's gonna go literally all the way up until April 14th or whatever mm -hmm. their last game is of where they're like, okay, maybe now it's time to <laughs> lay it down. You know, <laughs> they've, they've got some belief in them and I, I, I yeah. I appreciate it. All right. Can I just ask, hey, do we have any more sound left? Do we have any more Draymond? No more sound. Okay. All right. That's okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We got a compliment about our fits this evening. We appreciate you. Uh, thank you. What else do we have in here? We need to have a winning streak. Otherwise, we won't even make the play in as well. That is true. Feels like it's been a little while since the Warriors had a streak. Right now, it's been kind of like win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. Now they have two losses in a row. Longest, longest win streak of the season was five games. Yeah. They did that twice, but that feels very far away. And that's what you need in order to build yeah. up momentum. Yeah. You need a streak. You need to be able to prove to yourself that your routines, your habits, your everything that you do in order to be great is working. Mm -hmm. Because imagine you do the same thing all the time. Steph already said this this season. Yeah. Same thing every day, no different results. Welcome back to Dubstock Live, brought to you by Mancini Sleep World. Taking a look at who Steve Kerr played tonight. The bench was a little shorter. We've got four guys there coming off the bench, so playing nine in total. Clay Thompson leading the way with 16 points. There you go, taking a look right there. Um, Gary Payton the second in the game to guard Anthony Edwards. TJD getting a taste against some of the bigs tonight. Where would you like to start? Maybe we can focus on Clay? We can, Clay? Yeah, we could definitely. I want to first say, this is what everyone should expect. This is the time of the year where a coach is tightening things up. Mm -hmm. Not going deep in your bag anymore. Trying to figure out who are my people I can count on to come off of the bench and produce and perform. And so you're going to see people coming off the bench because they're a defensive power. And that is a Gary Payton for sure. You're, look, you're going to see someone that can come off the bench and calm and direct the offense. That's a Chris Paul for sure. You're going to see people come off the bench to spark the offense. That's a Clay Thompson for sure. So you're seeing, okay, these are the people that they want to build around. Now, the interesting part is now, how do those four people that you're going onto the bench to find fit in with the starters? Because mm -hmm. there's been some interesting combinations that we've seen so far. We saw a defensive lineup tonight. Uh, we saw a, I would say, a pick and roll uh, privy off offense to, uh, lineup tonight. So that's going to be something to look for in these next few games is just those nine players figuring out a way to make it work. 
Maybe a Moody gets tossed in there. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Especially if they stay healthy. Clay Thompson tonight. I, I didn't like... I didn't, I didn't dislike the way that the bench played. I thought they came in and did what they were supposed to do. I mean, GP2, career high, seven assists. That's the way to get involved when you're not producing from an offensive perspective. You get your eight rebounds. You get your seven assists. You get your teammates involved. Great. And you play defense. Anthony Edwards is a beast. Yes, he is. Okay, so GP2 did what he was supposed to do yep. as much as he could to bother him and, and, and get himself involved there. Clay Thompson, I felt like, the, the, did the same thing. Being able, there were so many plays tonight where Clay Thompson was in transition, gets the ball, sees that he doesn't have an open shot, doesn't travel, doesn't, you know, move too quickly, doesn't make a mistake, dribbles in, kicks out. And you love to see that because then he relocates, makes the attention of the defense go with him, opens things up for his teammates. He's been doing that a lot more now, which is helpful. When you're supposed to be the offensive spark and you're also helping generate offense for others, mm -hmm. you love to see that. CP3, looking for his shots. That's been a theme of his game. He's been able to come off pick and rolls and start going. And then TJD. Doing what he's supposed to do. Oh, that one almost put back. McDaniels wasn't trying to have it. The two-hand push under the basket. Uh, that could have been scary. That was very yeah. scary. But you love to see his aggression going up to the basket. Mm -hmm. Going up. Always two hands, right? Always trying to dunk things. Always trying to get his hand in the face of his, um, his opponents. I love his his comfort level right now on the court. And so I thought he was really uh, a formidable asset for them inside, um, keeping his hands up, making sure he could finish in traffic, in contact, uh, with contact, um, and just going hard to the basket. So I wasn't displeased with the, the way that the bench played. I thought that they did what they were supposed to do coming in. They just weren't as much offense as needed yeah. um, to be able to to elevate the team past the way that the starting lineup for the Minnesota Timberwolves were able to produce. And just watching some of that video, he didn't bite on slow-mo's pump fake either. He's no. always going vertical straight up. He's and playing. staying on the floor. Yes, there you go. You like uh, he's, he's played more than 28 minutes tonight, finished with only one foul. And then it's really important to get these minutes for TJD so he can back up Draymond Green. There's another player whose minutes or maybe his health with his back as he's been popping up on the injury report sometime sure. can use some fresh legs to help him out. Also really encouraged, as you were talking about, with TJD. JD, working with Clay Thompson, working with CP3, like having that lob threat and building those connections for two-man games with these guys. We also have to point out that TJD had two blocks in this game. So he this did. is his fifth consecutive game having multiple blocks. Having there multiple, blo having multiple yeah. blocks, and you're seeing him also being able to um, – he's learning from his turnovers. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing the turnovers that he's making. If he is trying to do something positive. It's not like he's getting overwhelmed. Um, he's, you know, he's bending backwards. Or, or just one. Just one. Just one turnover. That's awesome. Right. Yeah, okay, perfect. Yep. So now I'm like I'm, – I'm looking – wait, this is your – this is the final box that they updated. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This always happens, folks, by the way. Wait a minute. What's different – what's – how different is your box? There's, they just have... Oh, I see. Yeah, you got yeah, credit yeah. with another one. Mm -hmm. Well, shoot. Thank okay. you, Zena. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. This always happens okay. folks. we get new yeah, updated yeah. Uh, final boxes. But just okay. seeing the types of turnovers that he's making, mm -hmm. it's you're trying to work within the offense that Steve Kerr is trying to have you be a part of. Yep. Just, you know, he'll, he'll learn from those mistakes. Uh, I just I do really appreciate his comfort level because that's so important, especially in this part of the season. There's going to be a lot of attention on him, mm -hmm. um, trying to expose him as a, as a rookie in the league, and people trying to go at him. Ever since people saw him go at Victor Webb and Yama, okay, he's on people's radar. <laughs> um, so it's exciting to see him show up like he's been showing up, mm -hmm. learning. And, and getting better every time he steps on the floor. All right. When we come back on Dubstock, brought to you by Mancini Sleep World, we need to take a look at the schedule. Five games and seven days. Who's coming up? Did somebody say Wemby? Did somebody say Wemby? Yeah. Uh, we also need to talk about these Rockets because they are a problem. That's up next. That drives me nuts. I know. Okay, so they added, he had two turnovers. One was credited to him or a team. So. We're looking at TJD. TJD. Two turnovers. Or two block shots. Oh, two block shots. Or Only one? one turnover. Only one turnover. Do we oh, have the same? Oh, maybe we do. Yeah. Where's he at? Look. Wait. Two block shots, one turnover. And three steals. Three steals? We missed that part. Yeah. Guys, we're connected. It's okay. We'll it's figure okay. it out. We're good. We're no, good. we're here for each other. I think all of our points stand, would you say? Yes. <laughs> all they of do. our, they do. Our they our do. arguments they stand. Do.
Yes. Also, I forgot that TJ Warren was on this team. Yes, Anyways. yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm very excited about Trey Standings Jackson, and then schedule. Okay, this is a short block, yes? How, how many? Great, okay. Oh, we've got some women's basketball updates. Now Stanford's up one or is that 11? It's a one and an exclamation point. I do have my contacts in tonight. Get but, out. man. Dun, 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 Oh, my God. How many, how many points does Lottie Crooks have? Oh, yeah. It was Crooks versus uh, Cameron Brink. Brinks, right? Yeah. Brink? Brink? Singular Brink? Cameron Brink. Yeah. yeah. I always say Brinks like Brink. I do, truck. too. My bad. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. You're welcome, William. Okay, they, they're, they're keeping her well. I know. Only got five, okay. Kiki. 12 games left. left. Man. Very much so. Yeah, this season's Very much so a man. Man. With a deep breath <laughs> Strange out. Strange one. Yeah. I feel like, okay, so the first four months of the season, All right, taking a look at the Western Conference standings. The Warriors sit in the 10 spot. It is more tenuous by the day because the Houston Rockets are creeping. They've won 10 of 11, then they've won their last eight as well. Uh, the Warriors will play the Rockets later in April. So here's a look at what's coming up right now. Okay, so the Warriors are leaving snowy Minnesota. They're gonna go to sunny Miami. Okay, but that's a back-to-back. Uh, the, they'll stick around for the other Florida game. Then they got the Hornets and San Antonio. Um, man, okay, lots of games, lots of days at a time when the legs seem to be getting, getting a little tired. Mm -hmm. Steph Curry might even need a little bit of rest. They're trying to find it within games, the fact that he's only playing about 30 minutes. Okay, this, this seems tough. It, yeah, and <laughs> if you look at exactly who they're about to play back to back, you're talking about youth and athleticism. Miami, very much so the athleticism. They like to run fast. They communicate well. They have a team culture. Heat culture is real, and they have it on the court. They move well um, with each other, and then they have an athletic, they have athletic guards and athletic big. Mm -hmm. And whenever you have both, mm -hmm. you're going to be tired. Okay. Then you <laughs> turn around and play Orlando. The youth on that team and the athleticism on that team mm -hmm. is not to be slept on. And so they're, they're in for some, two back-to-back -back games that are going to demand a lot of them. And what happens when you're tired, it's hard to focus on those little things. Yeah. And that's when they really got to dial in. Okay. Well, a storyline going forward. Steve Kerr saying they're trying to win these games and trying to keep him fresh too. Him being Steph Curry. I understand what they're trying to do. That's a hard balance. I'm not sure that they can do both. So what side are the Warriors going to land on while well, the Warriors are trying to make sure that they don't fall out of the play-in, which is a crazy thing to say with the team with the highest payroll in the league. Thanks for watching Dubstock Live, brought to you by Mancini Sleepover. I think I gave you two tosses that were like, that's tough, Zena. Yep, sure is, KB. No, I don't, I don't remember them. <laughs> I thought okay. they were fine. All right, good. Oh my gosh. Steve Kerr needs to play the young ones. That's what Bree says. Yep, fresh legs right there. I mean, in that's order fresh to legs. play them, you have to play them now. That's what he's trying to do. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. That, I very much am thinking that against a, um, especially like a Miami, um, I'm an, I'm, I'm, we might need to see the young ones because Miami mm. is, Miami makes me think of Houston. Okay. Um, Miami makes me think of a lot of guys that have points to prove mm. and that also have verticals that are ridiculous. <laughs> so who, who are we talking about? So you want to see thinking, Moses? You want to see Lester? I want to see, I particularly want to see Moses. Okay. Um, and I'd be very interested to see Gee mm. against particularly a, a Miami. Um, I think that anytime you have an ability to run, I think the Indiana Pacers were a really, really great litmus test in being able to see how can the Warriors keep up with a team that has high pace, especially offensive pace. Mm -hmm. And this is what the Pacers have done all season. They had won against that already. They had found a way to deconstruct that, and yet they weren't able to do it at home. And so now it's like, okay, well, they've had more success on the road. Perhaps 
they'll be able to do the same thing in terms of deconstructing fast pace in a Houston Rockets, well, later on in April, but coming up with the Miami Heat and with um, the Orlando Magic. So I think a Moses Moody, someone that can, you think about people that can grab rebounds and go. Yeah. Right? Moses Moody is a guard that can grab a rebound and push. Guy Santos is a guard that can grab a rebound and go. That speeds up everything, as opposed to someone that has to grab the rebound and outlet, mm -hmm. or grab the rebound and um, figure out a, a primary ball handler. Someone that will, needs to pass it to Steph, or needs to pass it to, to, um, to CP3, which they don't have a ton of, but mm -hmm. you like to see it out of uh, Moses and Guy for, for sure. You want to see some coast to coast stuff a little I, bit? I, or a little I'd bit love more transition. I'd love to. Just a little bit okay. more transition. Yeah. And that's what Brandon Pajemski for sure. I think that's why he's still in the starting lineup. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. He brings those hustle plays, et cetera. But he's a high rebounding guard, which tonight was a quiet night for him. He only had two rebounds. Um, but that's what he can do yeah. is that he can rebound and go. And that means Jonathan Kaminga doesn't have to wait for anybody. Andrew Wiggins doesn't have to wait for anybody. They can run the lanes with him. Mm -hmm. um, Those two can outrace anybody. But 1,000%. There was a story there, without the ball in their season hands. It was. Absolutely. Somebody was talking about who's the fastest guy on the team, and it was Andrew Wiggins. It was, I, oh gosh. Things are in my mind, but I can't remember who said them. But it was Andrew mm. Wiggins. It was Andrew Wiggins. And JK, I JK has got to be right up there, too. I believe it. Yeah. The, the way that those two run the outside lanes when they don't have a ball in their hands. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting because they have gears. And you can see them. Mm -hmm. They'll run. And then when they realize, oh, there's no one in front of me. <laughs> it's a little like, bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, some, like okay. you know, like okay. there's something that goes into the second gear. And, they, yeah. and then also, on top of being the fastest, mm -hmm. they've got elevation. Mm -hmm. And so you like to have somebody like a, a Brandon Pajemski whose main goal, he wants to go down the court, go down the middle, and find somebody to kick it to or throw it up to. Yeah. Um, so that works. But, yeah, Miami Heat's going to be interesting. I mean, they're playing battle. opponents that are playing for seeding, like fighting for seeding as well. So the fight is happening for their next opponents as well. It's not just the Warriors trying to make sure they don't fall out of the play-in. Yeah. Even those words coming out of my lips, the Warriors want to make sure they don't fall out of the play-in. Never would have guessed we were saying that at the beginning of the season. All right, let's Crazy. say goodnight, and we'll be back for that back-to-back. -back. See you guys soon.